everyone welcome to my channel in today's video i wanted to share with all of you an updated review of kogan Do makeup products so if you've been watching my channel for a while and in particular any of my best of the year products you know that i've been for a long time really loving the kogan Do setting powder this is my all-time favorite loose setting powder and the kogan Do aqua foundation these two are some of my all-time favorite complexion products i picked these up in a trip to japan a few years years ago. And so late last year when I went back to Japan, I picked up a bunch more of their products. So I got their moisture foundation, their pressed setting powder, two of their lip products, two of their concealer products, and their brow pen. And so I have a video featuring my initial impressions of these products, plus a few other products that I hauled from Japan. But since it's been six months, I wanted to do an updated video now that I've had a chance to really test out these products and give you guys my overall review. So if you're interested in learning more about Kogan Do, then just stick around. So let's start with complexion. So these are the two foundations that I have from Kogan Do, both in the shade 123, which I find is a pretty good shade match for me. So for today's video, I'm gonna put both of these on my face, half on one side and half on the other side, while I talk through these two different formulations. So let's start just by talking about the packaging. So this is the packaging for the Aqua Foundation. It's a nice, really heavy glass bottle. It has the red bottom, which kind of captures the Kogan Do aesthetic. The Moisture Foundation's packaging is definitely less luxe. It's just in this red squeezy tube. And honestly, this is why it took me a really long time to buy this because this is quite an expensive product. I mean, all of Kogan Do products are, but especially their foundations. And so I picked this up because it was really luxe looking. I heard great things about it. This one also had rave reviews, but it was hard for me to justify the cost for this sort of packaging. But as I'll talk about shortly, I do think this is still very much worth it, even if the packaging leaves something to be desired. So let's start with the Aqua Foundation, which comes in this pump container. And as you can see, it does have a liquid consistency. So this is the more perfecting of the two formulas. It starts out with kind of light medium coverage, but definitely can be built up for fuller coverage. And Kogan Do is a brand that was designed to look really well in film production. And so it's a nice mix of being really perfecting on the skin, but also feeling really lightweight and being very comfortable on the skin as well. So you can see just with that one pump, there's definitely a lot more perfection on this side of my skin. In comparison to this side, you can see a lot more color variation on this side of my face. And I don't know if you can see this on camera, but in person, you can also definitely tell there are light reflecting particles in this formula, which gives it some of that perfecting quality. So even if the coverage is not super high, it sort of blurs and filters the face. So that's just one pump. I'll give you guys one more pump just so you can see how this looks built up a bit. Though honestly, I think it's pretty good as is. But since this is the higher coverage of the two, I just wanna show you guys the difference. This blends in super, super easily on the skin and feels really lightweight. So here we have one side of the face done. On the other side, let's go in with the Moisture Foundation, which is a cream consistency. And this is the lighter weight, more moisturizing formula. So if you do have really dry skin, this one is the one that would be more recommended. Though for me on my normal to dry skin, I find that both of these are amazing. Because of this creamy texture, this one actually can also be blended in really well just with fingers. So if you want something that is really easy for everyday use, this is really perfect. And on the whole, I would say the moisture foundation is kind of the more natural looking of the two. Both of them look really nice and natural on the skin, but the Aqua Foundation definitely is more perfecting. It'll give you more of that glam look where everything is just really nicely filtered. Whereas the Moisture Foundation gives you that my skin but better kind of look. So it just sort of looks like I have moisturizer on this side of my face. It doesn't look like I have foundation on, but it definitely did do a lot of work in terms of 
concealing any hyperpigmentation, any redness, and also just evening out my face. Again, I think this looks really good as is, but just for the purpose of today's video, I'm going to also just add some more in order for you guys to just see how easily the products build on top of each other. And by the way, I'm using the butt of my beauty blender on this side, just so we don't have any cross contamination. So you can sort of see the two separate products in action. So there we go. That just kind of increases the coverage a bit, but still does not look unnatural at all. And both of these do have a nice glow to them, especially when first applied. Now, if you just leave this for a bit, it will kind of settle into the skin and it's not like you absolutely have to powder this, especially if you have drier skin. That said, I do usually like to go in and powder things just because I want to make sure that my bronzer, blush, and highlight really blend in seamlessly. And so I'll show you guys those powders next. But here we have the final look of the two foundations on my face. I love how this shade 123 is a really good match for me for most of the year. I would say it's kind of perfect during the transitional seasons like spring and fall, but I can still make it work during winter and summer as well. It has the perfect undertone for my skin, so kind of neutral to a little bit golden leaning. And what I love about both formulas is they look really beautiful on the skin. They last really well and they're just not finicky at all. I've used both of these products with a lot of other products under a lot of different conditions and I feel like they just look gorgeous at the end of the day and I don't really have to think or worry about them at all. So if you're looking for a new foundation, I would highly, highly recommend both of these. This one has been my ride or die for a very long time and if you're someone who really likes glam looks, then definitely I would recommend going in with this one. If you want a little bit more of a natural look or just something that kind of can take you from anything from everyday makeup to something more glam, then this one is amazing, especially if you have drier skin. And I was really surprised because, you know, I wasn't really sure if it was possible for this to be worth the price given the packaging, but it is definitely worth it. And ever since picking this up, this has been my most used foundation. So now let's get into the two setting powders. So first off, we have this loose setting powder, which is in their sort of natural beige shade. This does have SPF 50 in it. Though surprisingly, I haven't found any white cast with this. If you watch my previous Kogendo video, I actually powdered half of my face and then took a picture with flash and there was no issues of bounce back with this, which is very impressive. So this is my all-time favorite powder, period. It's amazing for my normal to dry skin. Most powders I find really dry out my skin, but this amazingly does not. It makes the products underneath look really beautiful and also the products on top glide on seamlessly. So this is a really rare powder in my book. I'm very finicky with setting powder. I dislike most setting powders. And so it's saying a lot how much I love this and I've never found any powder that compares even though I've tried a lot of powders on the market. So let's get this on my face. So basically this comes with a giant puff. I don't actually use this puff, but it is a very nice luxurious puff. So compared to a lot of brands, they didn't skimp on that. So I'm going to first just go in with my jumbo bronzer brush. And because there's a lot of powder kind of just on top of this, I'm going to just pad this into that and then just sweep this across my face. I'm putting this on the side with the aqua foundation just because this powder is less drying than the other powder. So to make the two sides of my face look more even, I'm gonna put the more drying powder on the moisture foundation side. And whoops, I just realized I did not do concealer before this. So that's okay. Well, we're gonna do concealer afterward, I guess. Normally I should do it the other way around, but we'll first do this powdering and then I will probably powder again after I add the concealer. But here you can see this loose powder on this half of my face and how it just really nicely took down the shine and set the skin, but it does not look dry at all. So that to me is what's so amazing and unique about this powder. Let me actually bring you guys really close so you can see that more clearly. So doesn't this just look like my skin at this point? It just looks like I don't have anything on my skin. Like on this side, you can still see that sort of shininess from the complexion product, 
but here it just looks like my skin but not like it's dry at all so that's what I love so much about this powder it's just really really seamless and with pretty much any other powder including the other powder I'm going to show you guys in a second I feel like my skin looks a little bit dry immediately after application so now let's get into the other powder so this is their press powder which I picked up because as much as I love this loose powder, I do find loose powders to be pretty finicky to use. They kind of make a mess all over my desk every time I use them. So this is what the pressed powder looks like. It does come with a puff. Again, I don't really use this puff, but it's perfectly nice. And then this product is actually lavender. It has a white area and then the rest of the product is lavender. And I will say I'm not a huge fan of that fact. The lavender kind of neutralizes yellow, which I think is okay in theory, but at least for me, I feel like it tends to make my face look a little bit gray because it just mixes with my yellow undertones in a way that's not the most flattering. And so I do find I need to be kind of careful with this product. So here we have it just all over my face. And it actually looks pretty good today, I would say, but I do feel like it's just a little bit more drying and less flattering in my problem areas, like around the crease of my nose and around my mouth. So comparing the two sides of my face, I feel like on this side, it just really looks like now I don't have anything and my skin just looks really perfected and beautiful naturally. Whereas on this side, it looks nice, but I think there's a little bit more of a cast on the skin and you can just see the texture a little bit more in my problem areas. So definitely not a bad powder by any means, but I feel like it really doesn't compare with the loose powder. That said, I haven't found any powder that can compare with this loose powder. And especially I find that pressed powders for me are much more drying than loose powders. So it's still a decent pressed powder, just not one that I feel like is super exceptional. So now for concealer, there are two concealer products that I picked up from Kogan Doe. So first we have this little concealer palette. So there are three shades in here. You have this super light one, you have this medium one, and this deeper one with a hint of color correction in it. So just give you guys swatches of these three. So there we have these three, and this only comes in one shade. Then we have their Moisture Fit Concealer. This is a liquid concealer that comes in two shades, one that is more of a rosy undertone and one that is more of a yellow undertone. I picked up the yellowy peachy one. Again, Kogendo is mostly sold in Japan, so they have a really abysmal shade range, unfortunately. Now, as you can see, these formulas are very different, and that's not just because one is cream and one is liquid. The liquid one is much, much higher coverage and more self-setting, whereas the cream one is fairly sheer and very moisturizing. It doesn't really set, but it's good if your skin is super dry. On the whole, I would say I much prefer the liquid one, so I'm going to put this on this side of my face for you guys. Just because for me, when it comes to concealer, I would prefer a concealer that is much more high coverage but lightweight. I like something that kind of dries on its own so I don't really have to worry about it slipping and sliding over the course of the day. And I would say that this concealer is pretty good for that. It's not like my all time favorite concealer by any means. I still would say I prefer my Dior Forever Skin Correct Concealer a lot more to this. And I probably also prefer the Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona concealers. So it's not like the foundations where I feel like this is a holy grail product. And side note, I am getting a pilling situation here. So please do not do what I did today in terms of applying this over powder. That's my fault. This is not something that normally happens with this product. Let me actually apply a little bit more with a brush just to kind of pounce that into the skin. This liquid formula is definitely a much drier formula. So actually by itself, you wouldn't need to powder it necessarily. It reminds me a bit of the Surat Dewdrop foundation in that respect, though I like the Kogan Doe a bit more. Alrighty, so there we have it on this side of my face. Again, please ignore the 
whatever is happening here with pilling. I think that's either the powder or just how my skin's been lately. I recently started tretinoin again, and I think that also might be why my skin is peeling a bit. But in terms of the concealer itself, I really like how it just sort of blends in, provides good coverage, and basically sets itself. Now on the other side, let's go in with this palette. So first I'll take a little bit of this color correcting shade and just sort of put it on areas where I have some discoloration. So I'm not a huge fan of this palette because I feel like you do need a decent amount of product to get coverage, but as I mentioned, this doesn't really set itself. And so if you're someone who has very dry skin, I think this will be good in that it will definitely not dry out your skin. But if you're like me and your skin is kind of on the drier side, but you still really want your concealer to be nicely set, and you also do want a decent amount of coverage with your concealer, then this might not be the best because I feel like by the time you've built it up enough to get that coverage, it's a little bit thick on the skin and then you don't have the benefit of it being more natural. So here we have that concealer on this side of the face. And I will go in with a little bit of a powder on this side as well, just to set that cream concealer because as I mentioned, it's not self-setting unlike the other side. Moving right along, let's get into the brow pencil. So this brow pencil only comes with the pencil itself. There isn't a spoolie with this. And I picked this up in a brown shade, as you can see, it's a little bit of a reddish brown, so not the best color for my skin. This is shade two, but it's also not super pigmented, so I find that I'm able to, for the most part, control the strokes. On the whole, I would say this is a nice brow pencil, but not one that I would probably repurchase. There's really nothing wrong with the formulation, but I do like having a spoolie on the other side because at least the way I do my brows, I'm not that careful with how I draw my brush strokes. And so I like to go in with a spoolie just to kind of hide any mistakes that I made by blending everything together. And so it's kind of annoying that with this product, I need to go in with a separate spoolie. Also the formula, while nice, is just not terribly unique on the market. It's not like the foundation where I find it's super special. This is just okay. And as I mentioned, I feel like this brown shade is a little bit too reddish as well for my preference, at least compared to my hair color. I was a bit surprised because I would have thought like for a Japanese brand, it would be a little bit more of a cool brown, but this definitely has a warmth to it. So now taking a separate spoolie, I'm just going to brush that out to make sure it, none of the pencil marks are too harsh. So there we go. Brows are done. So I went off camera to finish off the rest of this look. If you're curious what products I have on my face, they will be in the description box as always. So now let's get into these two lip products. So first we have this lipstick, which is this beautiful shimmery red shade. So this is in their sheer lipstick formula. So you can see one swipe gives you a decent amount of pigmentation, but it's not full opacity. So this is one swipe on both the top and bottom lip. Doesn't totally cover up where my foundation got on my lips earlier, but if you want more of that kind of easygoing blotted look, this will definitely give it to you. I'm gonna build this up though. So here we have it with a few more passes. So I really like this lipstick in that it's very lightweight on the lips. And even though this is a red with a slight golden shimmer, it's actually super wearable as you guys can see. It's not a super in your face holiday red, but it still looks kind of festive. So zooming out, here's the look with the lipstick. Taking that off, let's go in now with the lip lacquer. I also have this in a red shade. So you can see this is actually more pigmented even though it's in a gloss formula. So here this is all over the lips. So you can definitely use a small amount of this if you want a less intense red look. 
but this is the look that you can get with just one dip of the applicator. And I really love this formula. So I have a lot of lip glosses and in particular, I am a sucker for this sort of non-sticky feeling, sort of slippy lip gloss that's very thick and nourishing on the lips. And what I love about this formula in particular is that it truly feels like a lip lacquer. So it kind of sets on the lips and envelops them. So even though on first application, it looks a little gooey, like it's gonna slip and slide. The moment it sets, it really creates this beautiful film on the lips that's surprisingly very long lasting, even though this is a gloss. And it's also really beautifully high shine as well, as you guys can see. So I find that this is actually still pretty unique in my collection, even though I have a lot of these sorts of formulas. And it's also just super, super hydrating and comfortable on the lips. I have very dry, very crackly lips, and so I'm very picky when it comes to hydrating lip products, and this one is one of my favorites. So that's it in terms of all of these Kogendo makeup products. Just to recap, I would say if you're going to buy anything from Kogendo, I would highly, highly recommend their two foundations. These are definite holy grails for me. And I think that both of them are really great in your collection, but if you're choosing between them, this one's great for a more glamorous filtered look. And this one is great for a more natural look, especially for drier skin types. I also really love their powder. This is extremely unique in my opinion on the market. And especially if you have a drier skin type, then I would highly, highly recommend going in with this. It's the best powder that I've found to date. Other than that, I really love this lip lacquer as well. This is the other formula that I think is the most unique among the ones that I've tried. In terms of the other products, I do like all of them, but I wouldn't say that they're loves. So they're not products that I would run out and repurchase and not ones that I would necessarily say that you have to get. They're definitely very solid products. So if you're on the market for a concealer, a brow pencil, a lipstick, or a pressed powder, these are all great. And I don't think you will dislike them if you pick them up, but I also don't think they are particularly exceptional. I would love to hear in the comments though, if you guys have tried Kogendo, what your thoughts are. And also in particular, if you've tried their eyeshadow or blush, which I still haven't picked up, but would love to pick up at some point, definitely let me know what your thoughts are on those products. So that's it for today's video. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye.